Hi guys, this is the last lesson on ratio, and it's called ratio calculations. So what we're going to try and do here is, given a ratio, be able to determine a missing quantity if we know the other one. So in this first example, I'm going to look at how to make um, chromola foam. Now you guys can't probably can't remember chromola foam. It was around when I was a wee boy, and it was this kind of powder that you put in a drink, and then you put water in. It fizzed up and made some kind of fizzy juice. It was quite tasty at the time. Yeah, they probably liked it actually. But anyway, right, so to make chromola foam, the ratio of powder to water is 1 to 5. That's fine. Now there's a question. If you use 7 parts powder, how much water would you need to make it taste decent? Basically, you don't want it too powdery and, and too strong. So the way to do this is to draw a wee table out. Now, the table I've got up here. Um, you don't need to recreate that exactly in your jotters. I would just draw a, a very basic table. So something like this. Like just draw a line up and down the way. And then a line across the way. And that would be enough. If you put powder up here and water here. And then one to five at the top. That would be absolutely fine every time you do this. Okay, so we know our ratio one to five. So we've got powder. We've got water at the top of our table. And a simplified version over here. We've got one part powder to five parts water. And what we're asked to do is, we're asked to work out how much water for 7 parts powder. So if we put a 7 at the bottom here, we need to work out what the blue number over here is going to be. Now the way to do this is to think about how do you get from 1 part up to 7? What you, what's your multiplier? Because you're multiplying up here. We're not thinking about adding on things, we're thinking about what you've multiplied up. So if you see here, we've multiplied by 7. 7 times 1 is 7. Now, whatever happens to this side of the table, to keep it the same, the water has to be multiplied by the same amount. So we've got to multiply the water side by 7 as well, and then we're going to get our answer. So 7 lots of powder means 7 lots of water, which would give you 35. So the answer to this is 7 parts powder requires 35 parts water. OK, let's look at another example. So. In the classroom, the ratio of girls to boys is 3 to 4. If there were 9 girls, how many boys would there be for this ratio? So draw your simplified table out. At the top, put in your 3 and your 4. 3 for the girls and 4 for your boys, just from the ratio at the top here. Now we're asked for 9 girls, so we'll put 9 in there. And we have to think what our multiplier is to get from 3 up to 9. Now that would be 3, wouldn't it? 3 times 3 makes 9. So we've got to do that the same to the other side. Times it by 3 also, which makes 12. So for 9 girls in the class, there would be 12 boys in a ratio of 3 to 4. Now sometimes you're asked for, it's almost like a reverse calculation. I'll show you what that means. So imagine we were making cremola foam again. And the ratio of powder to water is still 1 to 5. So we'll put our 1 here. And we'll put our 5 in here. But this time, we're told how much water you would use. 45 parts water. And we're asked for how much powder you would need. So we're trying to work out this one this time. So that's kind of why it's called a reverse calculation. So you've got to be careful and make sure you put your 45 in the water side this time. Now you're doing the same thing, you're trying to work out how many times 5 needs to be multiplied to get 45, and that's 9. 5 times 9 is 45. So you've got to do the same to the other side, 1 times 9, and you'll get your answer. So 45 parts water needs 9 parts powder, and you can write your answer at the bottom here. 45 parts water requires 9 parts powder. Okay, we'll do one more of these. And then you can try questions in the exercise, I think up to about question 11. But I'll make another video lesson to finish the exercise off for the harder stuff. OK, so here we go. Again, in the classroom, the ratio of girls to boys is 3 to 4. We'll put a 3 in at the top of the table. And we'll put a 4 in. Now, we're told if there's 20 boys, how many girls are there? So we need to put the 20 in the correct column. No point in putting over here. That's where the girls are. So 20 boys. And we've got to work out our multiplier again. So 4 times 5 makes 20. So we've got to times the other side by 5 as well. So there would be 15 girls. 
And then make sure you answer it properly. If there were 20 boys, there would be 15 girls. Okay, you can either watch the next video lesson and do the whole exercise, or you could try the exercise up to question 11.